Shalom, shalom. Y'all come up in here. All I need is one person. It was a beautiful day today. Had a few showers, kind of smuggy. I ain't gonna be on here that long, though. This is my third video I done made today. Y'all ain't seen them because they both going on YouTube. So, well, y'all see some YouTube videos and I got the same shirt on. I don't want y'all being petty. Like, damn, that brother had that shirt on for weeks. Because I might not, I don't know when I'm going to post each video. Y'all know our people got a petty spirit like that. On a says note, though, right? I want to say this real quick before my battery get low. I'm outside right now. I've been watching videos all day, so I've been kind of in the spirit to react to some of them. And um, I don't know if y'all remember, but I think it was last year or the year before last year. I had put a little video out there and it's crazy because I had been contemplating on putting a video out there. Can y'all hear me? Number one thumbs up something if y'all can hear me. Smiley face something. So I can make sure y'all can hear me clear. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Hmm. Shalom, can you hear me? Okay, cool. All right, and so, uh, yeah, uh, like I think it was last year, I want to say last year, or a year and a half or something like that, but I had did a funeral for a, a brother in the shy. A young brother got set up and killed by some of his own organization members. And I, I was asked to do proceed over his funeral, so I did his funeral. That was the first funeral I did, unfortunately. It comes with the job description, so it, I'm pretty sure it won't be my last. And uh, the family chose me to do, I didn't know the young man, but he was well known in the streets. But the family chose for me to do the funeral because one, I knew the family members and also, you know, from people watching me and knowing me in the community, they know where I came from. They know I was one of those same type of dudes. And so they didn't want a commercial preacher, as they said. They didn't want a regular preacher that's just going to get up there and say good stuff. They wanted somebody that's going to keep it real. Because you got a lot of emotional young brothers in there that's ready to go kill something because they homie did. So they wanted a preacher that's been in that lifestyle with the gunfights and, you know, all the horrible stuff that we hate that used to be a part of my life. So they figured I could deliver a better message, an authentic message, being that I came from that, I survived it by the grace of God, and now I'm, I'm changing my life, and I'm, I'm trying to bring other brothers out of that situation. So I did the funeral, and after the funeral, I was invited to the uh, after thing at the house, and uh, some brothers wanted to talk to me, one of their uh, Gs, one of their shot callers, uh, some people call them, uh, one of their heads or whatever. And he was telling me some things. And that's when I knew the rumors that they was dropping off crates of guns in the shy by the railroad track system was true. And we already heard rumors about it. I remember when we was coming up, we used to we used to call it hitting the freights. And we used to hit the freights for guns and stuff. But it wasn't organized. It was just like we'd be taking a chance. Sometimes we'd get them, sometimes we wouldn't. But this was something different, you know. Like if you just been in the shot for the last five six years man the the amount of guns it was always a lot of guns in chicago but now it's ridiculous like everybody got them like chances are if you ride by a block and you see 12 negroes on the corner it's at least three four guns out there that's just the true matter of it and so i was just watching this video uh uh the lady name is aquarius jazz it's like a caucasian lady you'll see a picture on there but when i clicked the video it was a brother on there and it's the same brother i seen a couple of years ago hey neighbor it's the same uh it's the same uh brother that i seen a couple of years ago and he was he he was on there uh saying the same thing now this was after the funeral and I was going to go live about it, but something just kept telling myself, oh, you might not want to put yourself out there like that. He was telling me straight up, like, man, dude, we get phone calls, and they just tell us what freights to go to. And they was like, we go to the freights, man, and it's, it's straight semi-automatic weapons in there with extended clips. And what we knew back in the day was even when we hit the freights, 
for guns, it was never no ammunition in them. Like, I think it's some kind of law about that, that you ain't supposed to transport guns with the ammunition. Well, this brother's told me, shared with me that um, not only was it guns in them crates, but it was live ammunition in the next crate. I didn't ask him too many questions. You know, I don't remember the brother name either. So law enforcement get to looking at this. I don't remember. It was a funeral and I was emotional and we had started drinking. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And, um, you know, they were saying that basically, uh, you know, it was guns and live ammunition up. And they was told where to get it from. And, you know, it made a lot of sense because I heard other rumors like this. You know what I'm saying? And it would be simultaneously. Um, what up, Sister Tammy? Hey, Tammy, go to work, girl. Get that paper. And uh, my sister Tammy, she from the, she grew up with me in the hood. She know what I'm saying is true. And uh, what up, Willie? You know, and so when they was telling me about this, I knew about it. And then it just so happened a few days later, a brother came out with a video. This is the point I'm getting to when he was saying how he was dropping off crates of guns in, in Chicago, right? And um, so I just clicked on a video. Like I said, it's called Aquarius Jazz. You go on her YouTube channel, her or him, but it's a picture of a female, a Caucasian female, it looked like. And the brother get on there talking about, and it looks similar to the same video I seen um, that I was speaking about prior. And uh, he go on there telling the same thing about how they dropped crates of guns off in Chicago. How these, these young boys, excuse me, y'all, got just more guns than we ever had. Now, let me say this. The reason the title is from zip guns to uh, extended clips is because anybody that was truly for their lifestyle, and this is not any shape, form, or fashion a, a glorification of this horrible lifestyle, I'm just going to keep it real and put it out there. Um, when we was coming up, right, and I was plugged or whatever from the south side of Chicago, plugged as we call it, I was in a particular organization, which I don't need to mention, but some of y'all know. I've said it before. And... Um, how they would have it was the shorties, meaning the young ones like us, the adolescents. A lot of times they wouldn't they wouldn't give us guns. They wouldn't let us get guns. They made us go to school. If we got caught ditching school, we'd get a violation. We'd get beat up. Or or if you didn't want to get beat up, they'd make us clean the block up. So whatever blocks was our territory, they would make us literally go through by hand and clean up the block. So that in, that encouraged us not to want to ditch school. Now. On certain occasions, they would hire certain young brothers that they trusted, that they would give a little rank over the shorties, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, they, they would, we have at least a gun on the block that the young brothers hood on, uh, hung on. We would have a gun or two, maybe. But it would be something like a little 22 or 38. That's what this brother was talking about. Maybe you might get a 9 or a 38. But if we were shorties, they might trust you and give you that. Uh, other times, you know, because it was the older brothers that was really doing all the warring. Now, every now and then, they would hire shorties that you call sent-offs. That's just the cruel reality of it. Um, you didn't see that too often because you didn't really honor leaders and chiefs and stuff that would send a young boy off like that. But you had sent-offs where you would basically, you know, they want to prove themselves, give them a gun, they go do something, right? Um, other, outside of them, though, the norm was the shorties wouldn't get no heat like that. Like I said, with certain occasions, we'd get some heat. We had to make a good case for giving us some heat, right? And um, so we got to the point where we, we'd go over the OGs here, and we'd be like, well, we'll just make our own guns. So we literally used to make guns called zip guns. Cats that come from the 90s, the 80s, know what a zip gun is. You literally made them. They real guns. I still know how to make one. I never show nobody how to do it if y'all don't know. But we would make zip guns out of, I just say, out of plumber material. We'll put it like that. And they actually shot. So if you weren't trusted enough to maybe get your hands on a little 22 or 38 or maybe even uh, the big boys, nine or something, you know, you had to make a gun. Other than that, you wasn't getting none, you know? Well, the OGs had the assault rifles and the 
Tech Nines and the Mac Tens and the Mac Elevens and all that type of stuff that do a lot of damage. The shorties didn't really hide it like that. We had a few here and there. This is my point why I'm making this video. If you go in the shy right now, these little 14, 15, 13 year old boys is running around with guns, with clips. Literally long as my forearm on them. I've seen them. Just, I'm talking about clips hanging out the side. You know what I'm saying? You don't even see Tech Nines no more. And that was like, you had a Tech Nine back then. Like the shorties might get hold of a Tech Nine. And he was like, whoa, you know, they kind of look like a Uzi, you know, if you look on TV. But see, the difference is a Uzi is just a fully automatic, like a fully automatic Mac 10, Mac 11, or whatever. See, this go to show you, I used to be, that's my old vice. I used to love guns. You know what I'm saying? I used to sell them, trade them, all type of things. And, um, but nowadays, if they can't get their hands on a Mac or Uzi, or AK or SK, which they can, because not choppers, as they call them, assault rifles, is all through the hood now. Like, just it's just normal for somebody to come out with a Caribbean, a, 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 a AR-15, something like that. They got military guns on these blocks, man. So my thing is, use y'all common sense. Where do they get them from? Like the brother was saying in the video, ain't no gun stores in Chicago like that. It's hard to find one in Cook County, period, which is one of the biggest counties in the country. But you definitely not getting it on city limits. Where are they getting them from? Back in the day, we used to uh, we used to uh, get guns through dope things, through hypes, cluckers, whatever you want to tell them. They would have a legit card. They would go rent their gun, uh, buy their guns, and we would get them some drugs to go basically buy their guns from them and they will report them stolen the police caught on to that it, we did it for a long time for decades they caught on to that so now they got a limit of time uh, 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 they have a limit on how many times you can report your gun stolen because they start catching on that these dudes is selling their guns these dope things you see what i'm saying see i'm keeping it 100 man it's hebrews in the hood this is gonna go on youtube but I am saying these type of things that could have ramifications for them, but the most high is with me, so I'm not scared. And it's truth because I'm not saying something for likes, for ratings, for subscriptions. I'm saying something so parents can be aware of what their kids is doing, especially their young boys. You know what I'm saying? Especially their young boys, because it's dangerous out there, man. It's dangerous in these streets. So I'm not taking the responsibility off of these young men not to do what they doing but all i'm letting y'all know right now is these boys need some male mentors and their family man if they daddy not there it need to be their uncles their big brothers their cousins uh if not i'm telling you who it's gonna be it's gonna be uh look uh it's gonna be crazy lord they live on the block or 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 money g or folks now or mo now or 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 wacky stone or or, or crazy foe, or these is names that nicknames cats get in these different organizations. You know what I'm saying? Whether they Vice Lords, Blackstones, GDs, BDs, Breeds. If you buy the Latin side, Latin Kings, Maniac Latin Disciples, SDs, Spanish Lords, whatever. Wherever you at, if it ain't no males around you to mentor these boys and show them the real because it's certain things it's only certain things that a mama i don't care yeah my fault y'all that was phone call so i guess it paused it but like i was saying um you know um no nah, I, I don't care lance let him knock you know me and you we been through the war that's my big bro he talking he joking he might be for real i really don't care because I ain't saying nothing that I don't know what's going on hands on today. I ain't involved in no criminal activity. Have not been involved in no criminal activity for a long time. But what I am involved in, I think part of my priesthood is, you know, first and foremost is to kick the word of God. Second, it is community work for my community. It's say love thy neighbor. It's many more ways to love your neighbor than just reciting verses to them. I'm going to recite some worldly knowledge to them that can help save their life along with them scriptures, like real talk. So if these young boys don't have somebody to look up to and guide them, I'm telling y'all what they gonna get into. 
And it's too easy for them to get a hold of some extremely dangerous weapons out here. So I'm telling y'all to these sisters, these single mamas, they got these boys. I know it's rough for y'all. I know y'all be scared. But y'all need to try to pass some type of pop. And stop. Don't just be dating brothers thinking that every brother is apt to be a role model to these boys. Just because you might like the way his beard look or his muscles or his car or how he smell or how smooth he talk, that's you. That don't mean he going to be a good role model for your son. Y'all hear me? So don't be so quick to bring these strange men around your little boy and you don't even know enough about him. He might be a straight drug kingpin. He might be a straight killer. And you don't even know it. You don't know what he just did before he came over your house. He might have went and shot up 13 dudes. He might have went and robbed some cats. He might be the stick up man. You don't know. So sisters, don't be so quick to open your legs to these brothers, man. Get to know them. And most definitely get to know them before you bring them around your child. And I'm just keeping that 100, man. You know what I'm saying? And so I was just making this little video, man, out of response to that video I just seen. And uh, it's true. They dropping them off, man. They dropping them off. So my message is what it always is. Return to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the most high God of Israel, which is the only God that ever existed. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of that holy Bible that they keep trying to trick you, tell you it's the white man's book. No, it ain't. It was written by our ancestors, Negroes. So you Negroes, in order for y'all to stop acting like savages, which I used to be, King Savage, my boy will tell you down there, Lance Kelly, why he cracking jokes. You know, I'm serious right now, but that's just how he is. But he's serious about it, too. He'll tell you. They used to call his, his nickname. He gave me was Mikey Device. You know, I snap out and go from <laughs> Shalom, bro, to snap right back into Vice Lord mode. You know what I'm saying? But that's because it was in me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm telling y'all, man, uh, sisters. And for the brothers, man, get y'all child life. Stay in y'all child life. I don't care if the mom is retarded. You can't stand her. I don't care how silly she is. You ain't got to deal with her. I mean, I know it's somewhat you got to deal with her because that's just the way it is, man. But, man, be there for your son. Your daughters, too, of course. They need us, too, because that's a whole nother video. But as far as these boys out here, because they going to they gonna find them a daddy. Rather you there or not, it's going to be that nigga on the corner that just don't really appreciate life that much. But to that boy, all he going to know is, is that man is showing him some attention and teaching him something. And you ain't there to do it. So you can't cry about it when your boy's sitting in a box and you ain't been there to help him whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? You ain't been there to help him in no type of way. How you gonna cry now that he's sitting in the box? Or how you gonna cry now that he's doing 100 years because he done shot four or five people? You wasn't there. And so he gonna get it from wherever else. Could have been a nigga like me. If I were out, I didn't come into the truth. I didn't bump into the Israel of God and them teachers up there. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> ain't no telling, man. I had a brother tell me just a couple years ago, <clears throat> and he like a, a little OG now in the hood. And he told me, he said, man, I used to watch you, man. I used to watch y'all. He named a few of us from our cloth. He was like, man, I used to look up to y'all, man. And now I look at him. I, I mean, that was kind of a compliment, but then it wasn't. If he would have said that to me now while I was in the word of God, it would have felt better. But it's kind of like I'm telling these young men not to do this right now, but I kept a gun on me. My boy Lance will tell you, sometimes I had two of them on me. So I'm just letting y'all know, man, uh, we need positive male uh, figures in these young boys' lives, man. It's, it's just going to continue to get worse. And in the end of the day, the only thing that can save us and our households and our community is the laws and statutes of the Most High God. With that I say, uh, shalom, shalom, and Jesus. Peace.